Yo, how's it going everybody and welcome back to this material UI course. In today's video, we're going to be learning about how to work with the drawer component in this library. And in the last video, we learned how to set up the nav bar and how to set up this uh, hamburger icon that if we click it, it would open a drop down list. Well, right now what we're going to do is we're going to take this hamburger icon and if we click it, it'll open up a drawer like so with some icons and some links like this. And if we click outside of it, it'll close it. Or if you were to click on this button right here, it'll close it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, so I've opened up the documentation for drawers, and if we scroll down, we can see what Material UI talks about navigation drawers as. And they say that navigation drawers or sidebars provide access to destinations and app functionality, such as switching accounts. They can either be permanently on screen or controlled by a navigation menu icon. So scrolling down, we have a couple of examples of the different type of drawers that Material UI provides for us. We have a temporary drawer, where if we click on this, it'll open a temporary drawer like so where we can click away by clicking on an actual icon or clicking on this black uh, backdrop right here. After that, there's a couple of more different types of uh, temporary drawers where they have swipeable edges. And so after that, we have the responsive drawer. Now the responsive drawer is pretty simple to understand. If I were to zoom in the page a little bit, we'll see a hamburger icon appear. If I click on the hamburger icon, it'll actually open up the nav bar right here. And that's how it's responsive. When the page gets small enough, it will open up the hamburger icon. That's where you can actually see a button to open and close the uh, drawer. So after that, we have the persistent drawer. This can be toggled open or close, but the drawer sits on the same surface elevation as the content. So right here, by default, we by default it is closed, but if we click on it, it'll stay as open and it'll stay persistent unless we actually click on this button. After that, we have the persistent drawer on the right side. Same thing, but it's just on the right side. After that, we have the mini variant drawer. Now the mini variant drawer, all it does is it provides you an initial amount of width that you want to appear for the actual drawer. So right here, without even toggling this, we see a little bit of the uh, drawer open right here, but only the icons. If I click on this, then it opens up the entire thing. After that, we have the permanent drawer. This is exactly what it means. It's a permanent drawer. There's no way to close it. It'll stay there as is forever. After that, it's the same thing, but on the right side. And we can also clip it underneath the app bar if you wanted. So in regards to the actual drawer API, it's pretty simple. Um, there's not as many props available to you as there is in such as like a button or a text input. You have a couple such as anchor, children, on, close, open, elevation. Pretty basic stuff to understand. Um, and we'll be working with most of this stuff today. So without further ado, let's get our hands dirty and let's work with this component. Alrighty. So last time we left off, we were working on this app bar right here. If I click on the hamburger icon, it shows this ugly looking uh, drop down list right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my VS Code app. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import all of the stuff that we need. So the first thing is we're going to import a airline seat flat icon and an agri agriculture icon for our links, uh, since these are the most random icons I can think of. After that, we are importing styled and used theme. So what styled and used themes allows us to do is it allows us to be able to style whatever we want using the material UI's methodology. And so what we can do with this is that we can actually create our own tag, our own React tag that holds all of our styles that is attached to a certain type of HTML element. So in this case, underneath my const pages, I'll show you what I mean. Underneath my const pages, I'm going to do drawer header. And remember that since we are targeting an HTML, a React tag, it has to be capital, is equal to styled, oops, styled. And inside of these smooth curly braces, we're going to target an HTML tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target div, and then I'll do smooth curly braces, smooth curly braces, and then really curly braces. So theme, arrow function, and inside of here is where we're going to provide all of our styling, basically. So the styling for this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll do display, we'll set it to be flex. After that, I'll do align items to be center. We'll do padding, and we're gonna we're gonna be grabbing the theme padding that's provided to us from Material UI. And what that's gonna look like is we'll do theme dot padding zero and one. And after that, we have to do dot 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 theme dot mixins dot toolbar. This is necessary to be able to keep all of our excuse me, this is necessary for all the content to be below our app bar. And so after that, we'll do justify content, and we'll make it flex end. 
this is coming straight out of the actual documentation as well so if you think this looks familiar that's where it's coming from so it looks like we have a little bit of an issue I think I forgot to provide curly braces into there there we go so now we have our custom react tag right there ready to use alrighty now what we're gonna do is we're gonna define our drawer width for our actual drawer so I'll do const drawer width is equal to and the base drawer width is always 240 uh, but since we're rebellious we'll do 241 and inside of my app bar example right here what I'll do is I'm going to create a new use state variable which is going to be responsible for our handle open and set open basically so the const open and set open is equal to use state initially when a user loads the app we want to set it to be false and what I'll do is I'll create two new handle open and handle close uh, functions so const handle drawer open is equal to arrow function and inside of there we'll do set open to be true and vice versa so this time we'll do false so const handle drawer close is equal to set open to be false like so and since we're not going to be using the actual drop down we can get rid of this handle open menu right here we can also get rid of this right here as well and if we scroll down we have a whole bunch of stuff here that's using the handle open and handle close nav menu from our previous tutorial we don't need any of that anymore so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this icon button handle open nav menu with this handle drawer open function right here so when we click it it'll run this function instead of our previous one and we can get rid of this uh, anchor L nav as well and we can also get rid of uh, get rid of this as well and this as well and since we don't actually need the entire menu we can just get rid of the entire menu itself and we're also going to get rid of that perfect now if we go into the app we should see it still run but if you click on it nothing's going to happen because we removed all of our previous code alrighty now let's go ahead and actually build out our drawer so at the bottom of my box right here what I'll do is I will define our drawer tag and how that's going to look is going to be drawer like so and inside of here what I'll do is I'm going to define our styling props so I'll do sx is equal to width and that width is going to be equate to our drawer width that we set up there the 241 and after that whoops and after that what we'll do is we'll do flex shrink is equal to zero looks like we might have not imported this let's go ahead and import it there we go and so after that what we'll do is we're going to target the actual drawer paper itself so what we'll do is and dot target the class name mui drawer dash paper width to be drawer width box sizing and we'll set that as border box like so and after that whoops and after all that styling what we're going to do is we're going to define what kind of variant we want so since we want this to be able to open and close outside of clicking the uh, backdrop what we'll do is uh, we'll do variant is equal to temporary after that I'll do anchor where do we want our actual uh, drawer to be either left or right we want it to be on the left side and we'll do on close so this is going to be basically a uh, function that when we click on the backdrop it'll close the actual app drawer so we'll do set open to be false oh wait whoops we actually defined the function right here so I'll just call that function right here <laughs> like so perfect alrighty and on open we're just going to call open like so perfect alrighty so now if I go into the app and if I click on our button right here ooh we have a drawer there's nothing inside of it but we have a drawer and it's 241 pixels wide perfect so let's go ahead and actually populate it with some stuff and a uh, our and use our drawer header tag that we made earlier alrighty so going back into my app what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use the drawer component tag drawer header tag that we made earlier and inside of there I'm gonna put a icon button 
this is going to be responsible for closing our drawer on the click of a button. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give it an on click function right here. And we'll call our handle drawer close right there. And what we'll do is we're going to use theme.direction is equal to LTR. And here's we, where we can define our icon that we're going to use. So since we imported two icons only, we'll just use both of them right here. So I'll use agriculture icon. Else, we'll use the airline uh, flat seat icon. And it's saying the theme about direction is, is not defined. So at the very top at, of my app or example right here, we'll define it. So the const theme is equal to use theme. And now if we go back into the app, we should see nothing because it crashed. Let's find out why it crashed. So theme.padding is not a function. My bad, it should be theme.spacing, not theme.padding. So let's go ahead and add spacing to be zero and one. And so now if we go into the app, we click on this hamburger icon, we see our, our track door right here, and I click it, it closes our drawer. Awesome, so now let's go ahead and actually populate it with some list items right here. Alrighty, so going back into my app, underneath my drawer header right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import a divider. And underneath my divider is where we're going to be rendering our list that we made in the previous tutorial. So I'll do list, and inside of the list, I'll do curly braces. We'll do page pages dot map, and we'll do text and index. Well, instead of text, let's call it links because there will be links after this. So I'll do links and arrow function, and inside of the arrow function, we're going to do return. And instead of the return, this is where we're going to return each individual item. So I'll do list item. And this is going to be equated to a button, which will have a key of index. And then inside of the list item, we'll do a list item icon. And we're going to be using those two icons that we imported earlier. So what we'll do is if the index is divisible as a whole number by two, uh, we will render our agriculture icon. Else, we will render a airline. Whoops. We'll render an airline airline seat flat icon like so. Perfect. And so we actually want the actual link text as well. So what we'll do is for that, all we have to do is a list item text, and we have to give it a primary key prop and for that prop we'll just give it link like that and if we go back into the app we should see that if we refresh the page we go into it we see our card carousel and table we have our back button working and if we click on the backdrop right here it also closes awesome so that concludes this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it helps you out in the next video we'll be covering how to work with routing and navigation in maturity UI with react router and if you did enjoy this be sure to like and subscribe and i'll see y'all in the next one peace